Hey guys, Connor here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the BMW OEM Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitch for our 2019 Ford F350 with the factory prep package. Our BMW Companion here is an excellent option for our Ford F350. This particular hitch has a 20,000 pound weight capacity, which is how much the trailer can weigh, as well as a 5,000 pound vertical load rating. Now the vertical load rating is going to transpire to what the pin weight of our 5th wheel trailer is. So we need to check our trailer to make sure it's going to be within the capacities listed for this hitch. Now another nice feature here about this hitch is it has 12 inches of front to back travel. Now this is going to be particularly useful for short bed trucks here like our F350. So we have proper turning clearance so we don't run into issues with the cab of the truck and the loft of our trailer when we need to make tight turns. So for those instances when we do need to engage the sliding mechanism on this hitch so we can get proper clearance between the cab of our truck and the loft of our trailer, there's this really simple and easy to use handle here, which is gonna engage the slider mechanism. We just wanna pull this forward and it'll stay in place. And then we can slide the hitch head and you can see it automatically locks in place so we don't have to worry about messing with the handle again. Now that we know it's locked into position, we can go ahead and make our turn. And once we've completed the turn, we can come up here again, engage our handle, slide it back. And again, our handle is gonna lock back into position so we're ready to tow again. Now two features that really set this BMW Companion apart from its competitors is the cam action handle we have here. Now this cam action handle in particular is going to be really useful when we need to uncouple the trailer on unlevel ground. Now on some of our other fifth wheel trailer hitches that don't have this cam action handle here, you're going to get a lot of binding issues and it's going to be extremely hard to release the jaws so you can uncouple the trailer if we're not completely 100% level. However, again, this cam action handle here is gonna make it much easier to uncouple the trailer when we're on level ground. Now we also have a little hole here, which you see is secured with our little bail pin and clip that's attached to the hitch. However, if we wanted to lock this trailer hitch so no one could come up and uncouple our trailer for us, we'd just simply use a padlock in this hole here, which we sell at eTrailer.com. Now perhaps the most notable feature here of our BMW fifth wheel hitch are these extremely thick one inch dual locking jaw mechanism. Now as you can see here, the two jaws butt up right against each other, so there's not going to be any space or any rattle. So these two jaws are going to form an extremely tight grip on the kingpin. This tight grip on the kingpin is going to reduce a lot of the chucking and jarring we might have with other fifth wheel hitches. Now this is a feature that BMW offers that not many other trailer hitch manufacturers can say because the jaws are extremely thick and they just form a very tight grip on the kingpin, which provides the smoothest ride. So as you can see now, we have a nice large funnel with our skid plate here, which is going to again help us with the angle that we're coupling and uncoupling our trailer. Now the torsion head here is actually fully articulating, so that's just going to help smooth the ride and again it's going to help with coupling and uncoupling the trailer. Now we also have two polyurethane bushings under here, which are going to help again release some of the rattle that you might find with some other fifth wheel hitches. Now there's no denying that these fifth wheel hitches are heavy and they're hard to get in and out of the truck bed. However, BMW has a really nice removable head system here. All we need to do is remove two pins. We'll remove a clip from the back here, and that's going to allow us to pull this pin out, set this down here. So we just have one other pin over here, one clip and pin. Remove that, and then once we have both of those out, we can go ahead and hold our handles here. So these handles are going to pull up and that's going to release the lock here on the pivot arms so we can remove the hitch head. Now you may need to wiggle it back and forth side to side to take our hitch head off. Now that we have the hitch head removed, this is drastically going to reduce the weight that we have to remove out of the truck bed at one time. So it's essentially going to make for one to two people to be able to remove this hitch no problem. So if you don't want to have to deal with the hassle of lifting the hitch wheel hitch out by yourself, removing it in two pieces or one, BMW does offer a lifting device, which we see here. This is actually sold separately. And the way this works is, this is a simply just gonna fit inside our locking jaw mechanism here. And then it's gonna lock into place. We close the handle. It's gonna provide a ring up here, which we can use some sort of overhead pulley system or some side of truck bed crane, so we can lift the hitch up and out of place without having to stress our back or having to take it apart in two pieces. So like most fifth wheel hitches, the hitch head height is actually going to be adjustable. However, what really sets the BMW Companion apart is the level of adjustment we have. This particular Companion adjusts from 17 inches to 19 inches when measuring from the bed floor to the top of the skid plate. Now most fifth wheel hitches don't quite go to 19 inches, which is going to be nice for the BMW Companion, 
for the newer trucks which have the taller bed sides like our F350 here. Now if we take a look inside here, there's going to be four sets of adjustment holes and we want to position the pivot arms accordingly which is how we get our height adjustment range. So if you're like most people here, we're going to want to utilize as much space as we have with our camper when we're towing. So what I found a lot of people like to do is they like to install a toolbox here behind the fifth wheel hitch in between that and the truck cab. However, one of the issues is we obviously have a hitch in place now, so the space behind the hitch and the cab is going to be limited in our toolbox selection. So we're just going to give you a quick measurement here that's going to help when you're selecting a toolbox if you desire. So the distance from the back of the bed here up into the forward most part of the hitch body is going to be about 22 inches. So essentially our toolbox cannot exceed 22 inches wide in order to fit in the space we have here. Now if you don't have a toolbox in mind, we here at eTrailer we have plenty of toolboxes that are going to fit in this space. Again, we just need to make sure the width does not exceed 22 inches. So if you want to offer some additional protection for your fifth wheel hitch, which is an option alternative to removing it each time you're done towing, you can go ahead and pick up a tonneau cover. And a lot of issues we run into with tonneau covers are you have to lower the hitch head height in order for the tonneau cover to clear. Now granted, this is going to vary by tonneau cover, but we have a Pace Edwards Jackrabbit here installed on our F350, and the hitch head is going to be at the tallest setting. And as we can see here, our tonneau cover is going to clear the hitch head here by about an inch to a half an inch. So we can leave the fifth wheel hitch installed, and we can close the tonneau cover for protection. So in regards to the installation process, our B&W companion here is going to be 100% no drill bolt-on option that's going to drop into place into our factory prep package. Now as you're going to see, we did have to make a couple adjustments to the feet, but this is completely normal and it's also going to vary by install. But other than that, the process is pretty simple. It's definitely going to be something you can do at home with just common tools. Now let's show you how to do this yourself. Now before we place our hitch into position, we need to come around to the locking tabs here. There's going to be four of them on each side, and these are going to slide into our pucks here. Now right now they're in the locked position, so we want to take the other end of our bill, pin and clip here. I want to remove that from the pin, pull that off. So then we can turn the handles so the pucks are going to be oriented correctly with the pucks on our bed. Now we need to do this on both sides before we pick the hitch up and set it into position. And now that we have the latches open in position, we can go ahead and grab a helper here because our hitch is going to be pretty heavy. And now we're going to carefully align it with the pucks in the truck bed. Come my way a little bit. We'll lift up. Okay, when you come back. So as you can see, we actually struggled a little bit to get the pucks aligned, but that's okay. We're just gonna wanna set it there gently on the truck bed. Then we can make the adjustments to our handles, our forward and back adjustment, as well as our side to side adjustments until we get the pucks to seat in place. Now that we have our hitch set into position, we can go ahead and take our locking handles here and secure those to the side of the hitch to lock it in place. However, as you can see here, there's too much tension on our locking handle and it's not going to turn the lock in place. However, no need to worry, this is actually a pretty common issue. The only thing we need to do here is adjust the height of our feet here. And we're going to show you how to do that. Now please bear in mind, we may need to only do this to one side or we may need to do this to all four sides. It's just going to depend on what the tension is and how it fits in the pucks. Now in order to get the height adjustment for our pucks and get the locking handles to secure, we need to remove this cover here using an Allen key. There's going to be two Allen head bolts holding this down, one on either side. So we just need to first remove those and then we can make the adjustments to our handles. There's one more on this side. And then once that's out of place, we should be able to lift the cover up and off. And now, as you can see, we have access to our cotter pins here and the castle nut. So the first thing we need to do to make our adjustments, we need to remove this cotter pin here. Now in order to move this cotter pin, we're gonna need to twist it 
So we just need to straighten that out. And as you can see here, now that we have our cotter pin straight, we're actually not gonna be able to put this out yet because this is gonna contact the side of the hitch body here. So what we need to do is we need to lift up on the hitch here and get that little locking knob out of the puck so we can then turn the castle nut and remove the cotter pin. Now please keep in mind, you can do this beforehand while the hitch isn't in the truck. It'll make things a little bit easier. However, we don't know if this adjustments even need to be made, which is why we chose to set the hitch into position first and then make adjustments as needed. So in order to lift the knobs out of the pucks here so we can turn them and remove the cotter pin, we're just gonna take a piece of wood here and prop it up under the hitch until the locking knobs release from the pucks in the truck bed. And that should do it there. We can just simply turn the handle here, which is gonna allow us just to pull our cotter pin out. Now we can go ahead and take a crescent wrench. We can loosen this castle nut here because this is gonna allow the height adjustments with the knob inside the pucks. So we're not gonna loosen it all the way. We're just gonna unthread it a couple times and then we're gonna do a test fit with the puck. So now that we have the cotter pin removed and we've loosened this nut a couple threads, we're gonna just go ahead and do a quick test fit. So we'll remove our block of wood And then set the hitch back down to see if we can turn our locking handle. Now, as you can see here, that turned a lot more smoothly. So what we're going to do, since we have this one set, I'm going to go ahead and give a couple turns back on the castle nut. We don't need everything tight, we just want to keep it into position. And then we can just go back and forth, testing the fitment until we get the right tension on the knob. Still a little loose. Now we want us to have some tension, but we won't want it to be too tight or we could damage the pucks, but we also don't want it, be, it to be too loose or it could rattle around. So we're getting just about where we want it. One more turn, and I'd say that's about good for this one. Now that we have the right amount of tension, we can go ahead and reinsert our cotter pin. Now keep in mind, we may need to move the castle nut in order to align the hole with one of the openings on the castle nut. may need to hit it in just a little bit. And then we can go ahead and take the opposite side here and fold it back over to lock it in place. Now we can go ahead and make the other adjustments on the other handles if needed. However, please keep in mind this portion of the install will vary just depending on how well the pucks and the knobs fit together in the truck bed. So in our particular case, none of the pucks were gonna fit the way it was adjusted right out of the box. So what we had to do is we had to repeat the same process for all four sides, removing the cotter pin and then loosening the castle nut so we can get the right amount of clearance to fit inside our pucks here. So again, the last step here, we're just gonna go in ahead and check the tension on each of the handles, tightening the castle nut back up until we get a good feel for the pucks. So you can see there, we can feel it catch once it rotates enough, and we have a nice tight and secure fit inside the puck here. So again, we can go ahead and reinstall our cotter pin, which we may need to move the castle nut to align with the hole in order to fit our cotter pin in. And for, again, for our particular application, we had to do this for all four sides, but this again is gonna vary by truck. So now that we have all our handles adjusted properly, and they're tensioned correctly inside the pucks. We've reinstalled the cotter pins and then we've tightened down the castle nut. We can go ahead and install our rail covers again. And again, we're just using an Allen head here. None of these need to be super tight or torqued down to any specifications. Just hand tight is good. Now that we have the rail covers both installed, our final step here is gonna to be to insert our bail clamp to lock our handles in place on each side. So we just take this here, line it up with the holes in the handle, the holes in the hitch body on both sides. And then we can take the clamp there and lock it in place. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. And now that we have our hitch in place, we have all our locking handles adjusted properly and secured in the truck bed. That's gonna do it for the BMW Companion OEM fifth wheel trailer hitch for our 2019 Ford F-350 
with the factory prep package.